ministry though signs and wonders do not guarantee that that what guy is saying is truth now people will hear benny say stuff like this and they say see he teaches solid mike all right this is mike winger for those of you who don't know who he is mike winger is um what he does he helps people to think biblically of course and is Speaking about a number of things on his channel that I actually really appreciate, you can learn a lot from this man. Here is the thing. He exposes Benny Ham in a video recently that has garnered so much views. We're talking about almost a little bit half a million views, 658,000 as of right now. And that video is over four hours long. That tells you a lot for one Christian content when you get this much views, and man. It is mind blowing what's in there. I mean, it, it, it completely blew my mind. So many people are talking about this. Uh, even Benny Ham himself has found out about the video and he is not too happy at all. Benny Hinn is actively trying to silence me, abusing the YouTube copyright system to try to take my YouTube content off the internet. But so far, YouTube has got my back. I have contacted an attorney, and this could possibly turn into an actual lawsuit. I'm going to give you a full update, right? Yeah, so uh, again, a lot of people spoken about this video. Here are a few uh, YouTubers who are speaking about this. This video is just just brutal we gotta we gotta call a spade a spade mm -hmm. this is this has gotten out of control and i'm grateful for the work of mike winger putting this together this right here i think if there's ever a case of someone just flat out getting it wrong over and 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 over again and never repenting for it and so my, my question to supporters of him is like how naive are you and you're gonna tune out yes categorically without question benny hen must repent at the very least of carnal manipulative fundraising, which he himself has renounced, but has gone back to again and again, and at the very least of false prophecies that were given without accountability or public repentance or change, at the very least, those two things. I refuse to watch anything of Benny Hinn until he publicly repents. We're gonna talk about Mike Winger laying a masterful four-hour class against Benny Hinn. It's something you want to watch, a false doctrine, uh, false prophecies, and fake healings, right? Mike Winger exposes Benny Hinn's false teachings, his manipulation, his false healings, his false prophecies, his false miracles. All of these things Mike Winger has faithfully gone through, and I would encourage you, go and watch this video. Mike Winger recently made a comprehensive video covering almost every aspect of Benny Hinn's 30 years of spiritual deception. But in my heart, I still knew something was wrong until I realized Benny Hinn never truly repented. Yeah, so it's worth the watch. And again, in this video, we're not going to go too deep into this. I'm just going to look at a few segments with you. Uh, man, oh man, I'll tell you what. This is a masterful work indeed. Like he he really did his job on this. This is not fake news. This is not gossip. It's not misconception. It's not an attack, particularly on Benny Ham. This is addressing the pains of the victims. And I will link this video in the description of uh, of this video so you can watch the entire thing. It's four hours long, so you might have to eat it up in segments throughout the week. And that's kind of what I've been doing myself. But I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's entertaining. It's, it's actually, it's, it's very biblically balanced. And it will enlighten your eyes from these type of ministers as well. And again, I don't know why Benny Ham is still preaching to anyone after, uh, after having all this evidence against them. And I think this video... It's probably the reason why he is so determined to come with a lawyer now to shut everything down. He is trying so hard for this video to be taken down. <laughs> and and uh and YouTube is not working with him because the way Mac Winger did it, he only provide commentary on certain parts of the video. So which was only the right thing for him to do. So in this video now, I'm going to talk about how Benny Ham is speaking about raising the dead. Friends, you got to think about this. This is the stuff that man has online, uh, stuff that has been recorded, and and he just goes scot-free. And I think the Christian church, we, are, we have to do a much better job holding people accountable who are doing stuff like this. When Benny had said it, it sounded like it happened when he was there. It sounded like it happened at his event. It sounded like that. First, let's talk briefly about Benny raising the dead. Here's an interesting claim that Benny made. Again, showing old lies, but I, I wanted to let it be its own separate little section. It's very brief. 
But there was a time when Benny claimed that there was a, a resurrection or, or someone raised from the dead at one of his meetings. Check this out. And it's a whole drama. I was in Ghana just recently. We had half a million people show up and a man was ra raised from the dead on the platform. That's a fact, people. I, that's a fact. A man was raised from the dead on the platform. We have it on video. For three months, we persistently requested an interview with Pastor Hinn about that claim and others. But the only interview we were granted was with the executive producer of his TV show, who admits there is no videotape of a man being raised from the dead. We were repeating a story that we had heard that we did not actually have proof of. That was a mistake. I mean, in retrospect, I would say that was a mistake. <laughs> I would say that was a mistake. They repeat. That is that, and that that's been the par for the course. And in this video, Benny Hinn is is gonna condemn himself about his own ministry. I mean, it's pretty balanced the things he's saying, but I think there's also a lack of self awareness where he doesn't realize the very things that he's speaking against. He himself has practiced for years. This is the only other option on the table. Benny Hinn, in his own words, I'll let him explain how it works. I think the most dangerous things that are happening is these falls. Signs and wonders. You heard yeah. me right. False signs and wonders in the church. I'm not I talking agree. about outside the church. Not yep. all signs and wonders are biblical. So in the last few years, signs and wonders have come. Signs and wonders have gone. People have gone into all kinds of things. Benny and Hinn. some have been biblical and some have been a blessing. But a lot of it was just plain bizarre. Benny and Hinn. dangerous, to be honest with you. Benny now, Hinn. signs and wonders do not determine truth. Truth no. is determined already. Please, please hear this. Because some will, will, will try to convince you that miracles guarantee what they're saying. No way. Miracles right. do not guarantee. Please hear this. Please hear this. This is this is good stuff. I'm, I'm I'm liking this. This is interesting stuff, Benny. It's really. I mean, he's correct about that. What he is saying here is so biblically balanced. But the problem is the very things that he is preaching about are the things that he himself has done for years. Cool. I mean, you're ref you're refuting your own ministry, though. Signs and wonders do not guarantee that that what guy is saying is truth. Now, people will hear Benny say stuff like this, and they say, "See, he teaches solid, Mike." You have to for a minute realize that the way that people who are con men or, or liars, the way that they take advantage of you is by by realizing that you have a hard, a lot of us do, sometimes I do too, I have to really think about it. I have a hard time realizing that someone can just be lying through their teeth, <laughs> that they could be two-faced, that they could be telling me something. Like I, you know, I was a domestic violence counselor for years and I had this one guy in my counseling program who uh, would fall asleep during class, would ignore me, would, would exhibited all kinds of negative behaviors. I was like writing to the court, like he's not really working the program. I think he's a danger to himself and others. But then at one point he comes up to me and he realizes he's about to get ousted from the program. And he says, Mike, I just want you to know you've changed my life. I, I really appreciate you. You've changed my life. You've impacted my life so much. And it was, I was like, wow, that's so great to hear. I was so happy to hear that. And on the way home, I was replaying the night and I went, wait a minute. He said that because I caught him sleeping in class again and told him I might kick him out. He was just lying to me to manipulate me. He was just saying that to earn credibility. I'm just saying, it happens, guys. Signs and wonders do not determine truth because truth is already determined. It's already established. Mm -hmm. So someone says, well, I have a ministry and I have signs and wonders, which means what I'm preaching is truth. No, 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 absolutely not. Just because someone says something, you have to go back and check it with the word. <laughs> right like nine member Godhead or little gods, or even the teaching that God is always going to heal everybody. Yeah. Right. Which Benny Hinn in the nineties said was wrong, but he seems to be preaching it again later on. Um, or the yeah. And again, watch the segment here about slain in the spirit. We're not going to go too deep into this because you got to watch the whole thing by your, for yourself. Um, and he pretty much debunks all, a lot of this. And I'd see Benny Hinn there. I'd see him doing all kinds of slain in the spirit stuff. And you can actually watch, I'll show you some clips of this sort of thing. And the question is going to be like, like, what is this? Is this God? Like in some cases he shoves people, but like here he just waves a jacket at them and they go down like dominoes, right? Look at this stuff. What is happening in a Benny Hinn event when he does the slain in the spirit things? 
And I've spent a lot of time on this, and I'll give you my theory as to what this might be. I think it's a pretty legitimate thing. Some people say, well, maybe it's demonic. I'll come back to that at the end. But I think that there might be some less spiritual or supernatural explanations for these things, some simple kind of straightforward explanations. And the correlation is going to be something, forgive the terminology, guys, it's called bullshido. Bullshido, which obviously there's a connection with, uh, with, with a bad word there, but it's martial arts. There, there's there's a lot of fakery in martial arts nowadays. There always has been. Um, there's some real martial arts things going on, but there's a lot of fakery that's in there too. So you think of the person who's like, oh, the death touch. I could do the death touch and you just die. Like that's not real. That's not a real thing in, in, in reality. But it's in a lot of martial arts. You get a lot of attention, notoriety. Martial arts that is fake is promulgated widely in the world. And this is where MMA comes in and Mixed martial arts competitions have, whether you like them or not, the effect that they've had is to take people who make all these claims about the, their their special martial arts skills and show that they're often not true. So this has led to the modern exposing of many of these, what they call bullshido artists, these people who use, do fake martial arts. Here's some examples of people who pretend they use like the power of chi or the energy power to like transfer energy and control other people's bodies through little motions. Um, it's fake. But here's the crazy thing. The people that follow these guys think it's real. They're not just, maybe some of them are actors, but they're not just actors. There's a lot of people who follow these fake martial artists guys <laughs> who think it's real. They think this dude is really controlling people. Even themselves, they think they're really being controlled because they've been sort of indoctrinated and kind of hypnotized into being controlled. So they do these wild and wacky things. There are countless videos online of people doing this sort of stuff. There's a Chinese martial artist, who, an MMA fighter, who challenged his his fellow Chinese martial artists who were pretending they could do this stuff. And every time he gets in the ring with them, he just beats the fake martial arts right out of them. Look at this stuff. Some of these are famous people. Some of these are well-respected in their circles. But their martial arts are fake. They will only be able to do it on a cooperative subject. Someone who has been trained to believe that it's real. What I'm describing to you is not just Bullshido. I'm describing... How Benny Hinn, I think, slays people in the spirit at his events. Here is an explanation of how this was exposed in the case of a guy named George Dillman. Dillman is like a poster child for being a fake bull Shido martial artist guy who is fully exposed. Dillman claims to have adapted this technique to where he can knock a person out without having to touch them. No touch. Then they got to slap him. He makes people. a chi ball. He'll get the radio frequency going between the hands. I've seen him already <laughs> knock people over with it. He throws the chi in such a way that when he catches Slow it, motion it knocks knockout. him backwards. But what really draws the audience's attention is Dillman's no-touch knockout by just throwing a giant chi whammy at them. Yeah. <laughs> After seeing so many demonstrations, so many different techniques, so many different Listen moves, you, you can't help but start believing. I have half moons and my finger touched now. That means the chi is, is just coming out. Um, National Geographic did a documentary on this guy. And you guys, I'd recommend you check it out. I'm not going to spoil it all for you here. But but he exists, okay? And he has students like that girl who's like, I've just seen so many demonstrations. Like, of course I believe it. First you get them to believe it. Then you do it to them. This is the process. Dillman would just probably have to control who he does it to and doesn't do it to. He, he, you know, you become a really good judge of people's emotional states as a, as a fake guy like this you you look at their eyes you see if they're submissive if they look expectant you try to figure out who will yield and who won't you control who's around you you control who you interact with you do all this stuff to keep up the illusion now dillman was the, had a skeptic brought up who was then put opposite him and he was supposed to while the cameras were rolling to prove himself he didn't know they were gonna do this to to knock that guy out using his chi at first he does his like chi thing and the guy doesn't get knocked out and then at one point he actually hits him even though it's supposed to be demonstrating a no-touch knockout because you can tell he's getting desperate. Then, when it doesn't work, and I won't spoil it because you got to go look, at the, you got to go buy the National Geographic thing if you want to watch it all, um, or find someone else who's used it online, but not me. So, afterwards, I love how George Dillman, after he's been exposed as a false guy, he explains why it didn't work. Listen to his backpedaling. Or is it, as skeptics suggest, simply a form of hypnotic suggestion? The skeptic was un, was a, a totally non-believer, non-believer. Plus, but if the guy had his tongue in the wrong position of the mouth, uh, that can also nullify it. 
<laughs> he goes on. He's like, if you had one toe this way and one toe that way, that could nullify it. Plus, <laughs> he was a total nun, un, 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 un believer. And uh, that's pretty much what Benny Ham has been doing for years to a lot of people is manipulative is is very controlling and very very dangerous i mean i've never believed it years ago i was i was watching this guy i'm like this guy's a joke i've never believed it of a stage hypnotist of only getting volunteers because you want willing participants you're willingly there um, you know your stated purpose for being hypnotized and you're following instructions as long as you cooperate you'll be hypnotized you know everybody who's hypnotized responds a little bit differently. Some people are the rock stars, uh, rock star. quote unquote. These are the people who are the most animated, the most exuberant, who really commit to doing all the things that the hypnotist is suggesting. And there mm. would be other people typically who respond, but not quite with as much gusto. Um, people who are a little bit more laid back and uh, you know just not quite as extroverted, just not quite as confident or enthusiastic about what they're doing. Um, and then, of course, there are certain people who don't feel comfortable enough in that setting to be hypnotized at all. And those are the people who the hypnotist sends back from the stage to their seats in the audience. I think hypnosis is primarily <laughs> about one thing. All right. The next part of the video is Benny Ham uh, pretty much asking for money. Uh, nothing new under the sun, right? And... <laughs> First of all, listen to what he said here, and then uh, you get the sense that he almost looks as if, as if this man has repented, because there was a video of him uh, supposedly repenting from this practice, but um, not exactly, because Mike Winger in this video is going to show you he actually never repented. It's what he says and what he doesn't say. But what he says is powerful. If he meant it, it was important. And I'm sorry to say that prosperity has gone a little crazy, and I'm correcting my own theology and you need to all know it because when i read the bible now i don't see the bible in the same eyes i saw the bible 20 years ago and i will tell you now something that is it's going to shock you i think it's an offense to the lord it's an offense to say give a thousand dollars i think it's offense to the holy spirit to place a price on the gospel i'm done with it i will never again ask you to give a thousand or whatever amounts because I think the Holy Ghost is just fed up with it. Are you, did you hear me? Yeah. I think that hurts the gospel. So I'm making this statement for the first time in my life. And frankly, I don't care what people think about me anymore. First time? If first time. I hear one more time, break the back of debt with a thousand dollars, I'm going to rebuke them. <laughs> so... Uh, it's interesting how this stuff went, right? So now here is Benny Ham. Not even uh, recently. We're talking about 2023, 2000 and 2024. And these are the videos. Preaching the same stuff that I would call prosperity gospel. In 2019, his repentance, that was just over four years ago. Well, almost, almost exactly four years later, he gave the following message in October of 2023, Still doing it. Tonight you're gonna give. You, you, you're gonna prove yourself faithful to God. To God. I know you paid, but your your payment was not a seed. Your seed is now. Payment for the conference. What you gave as a payment to enter into this conference was only to get a chair, not a harvest. And I'm gonna ask you to give, and I will give over a thousand dollars of you have to give. What? God cannot trust you with the wealth of sinners and the abundance coming. And God. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm telling you, this is so bad. Giving him our life. And the minute you start giving, the promises are there for us. And God cannot lie to us. He's God Almighty. He's not a man. So it says if they obey, if they obey. Now that's, you know, the tough part. Because sometimes giving our money is tough. But then comes the test. Are we going to really give the Lord our finances because that really tests our hearts um just a side note for anybody who's wondering like i give me and my wife we do give um and i think we give generously i'm not arguing against giving here i'm arguing against benny hinn's theology of giving and the way that he gets people to give and the reasons they give and the promises he makes about their giving that's all unbiblical that's all love of money this is serving money mammon is another translation for it and not and not God. So yeah, he loves you so much. He loves you so much, even though just a few months ago, 
he talked about how he knew that this message hurt people and damaged people and he prayed for their forgiveness. But he loves you so much, he's going to teach it to you again. Here it comes. He's going to tell a story now about he was how he was in $200,000 in debt and he gave everything he had left in the bank and God give, made him took him out of debt. The implication is, if you're poor and in debt, give every penny you've got to Benny Hinn and it'll all go, it'll all go fine. He's bankrupting people, guys, the victims of Benny Hinn. Because I was saying, well, I can't give because I have problems and I have debts. And he said, listen, the law of giving is a fixed law. It's, it, it's the law of God, like any other law. It's the law of God. And then I began giving. And boy, that was tough. My board, my board, I had nine board members. Seven walked out on me because I gave everything in the, in the account. And I gave everything in the bank account. That following week, I began getting People sending me in the mail money. The Lord told me, the Lord told me, the Lord told me. I was out of debt in six months. You know what it was to be uh, like in debt, 200,000 back then in the 70s? But God brought me out of debt within six months when I began to give. I saw it work. <laughs> so obvious. That's like the law of attraction kind of things. It's not biblical. You know, God can bless you when you do give and God will bless you. But it's not always based on what he is talking about. So I'm going to say it's link in the description below. I wanted to f share a few segments with you. I think it's good. It's best we end this video right here. So the question now is why, why, why were so many people deceived by Benny Ham? Why did so many people uh, fall for this? Well, number one, they were desperate. They're not bad people. When people are desperate and they're looking for an answer and they, they're looking for an answer in all whatever places is possible, wh wh whoever might have the answer, they will do and go along with just about anything. So uh, desperate people do desperate things and desperate people believe just about anyone. Uh, the other issue that I think is happening here is because Benny Ham is, is good. He, he, he has mastered his craft over time and he has been so successful at it that uh, now when he says what he says, it's very convincing and there was a lot of video editing. There was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of false miracles. So it's not just people are desperate, but the way he has portrayed his ministry before the eyes of the masses, it was convincing for many of them, especially those who are desperate. And I think another issue that we have is a lot of people don't know their Bible. A lot of people don't read the Bible or they don't love the truth. The Bible says this in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Speaking about the Antichrist power and those who are using signs and lying wonders. Watch this. Even him who is coming after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness. If you think Benny Ham is deceitful now, uh, you haven't seen nothing yet because the Bible tells us that. And I have a sermon coming up about this. And the him here is not just Antichrist. It's not just, okay, the, the system uh, of Babylon, you can say. The him here is the devil. <laughs> I'm going to show you in a future study. Anyway, the devil is going to come with serious signs and lying wonders. And Benny Ham might not deceive a lot of people, but when Satan shows up like this, it will deceive the masses. So uh, we are told with unrighteousness in them that perish because they love not the truth. This is the problem right there. The problem we have in the Christian world, especially in the West, many of us don't love the truth. When we hear the truth, we fight against it. We kick against it. We want to stay in our denomination, regardless of what the Lord has revealed to us. We don't care about the truth, right? People hold on to atheism, false teachings and false doctrines. That opens them up for massive deception. When you reject the truth, the only thing that is left to receive is the lie, is the deception. The Bible says, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Oh, God is doing this to them? Well, <laughs> there's no other option. If a person does not love the truth, the only thing that's left to accept is the delusion. So this is why God can make this statement. And this is why they shall believe a lie. For what reason? That they might be damned which believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. And if you love the truth, you love the Lord, you love Jesus, uh, he will keep you from these deceivers. He will keep you from them. It, it, you can discern them a mile away you will not fall for their tricks but uh unfortunately men like benny ham they still exist today i think a lot of them are still uh, alive and well and i can tell you they they haven't gone away they they've changed their mode of operandi you know they changed their approach they've changed somewhat 
their, their, their way of doing things, but a lot of that same similar crazy teachings are still being taught today. And I can, you can see it a lot in deliverance ministries. There's a lot of talk about setting people free from demonic possession. Some of that stuff is not real. Some of it is, I do believe in miracles. I do believe in deliverance ministry. I do believe that we can actually uh, cast out devils. I have no problem with that. That is biblically true. But some of this stuff is being manipulated, is being abused, is being used as a mean to control the minds of mass, a lot of people. Don't fall for it. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The best acid test against some of this crazy corruption to love the truth, to continue in the word of God, is to allow the word of God to change you. That doesn't necessarily mean miracles are bad. That doesn't necessarily mean signs and wonders are always evil. God's people use signs and wonders. The early apostles did a lot of signs and wonders. Jesus did miracles. There was no problem about that. But when these ministries are centered about that, when these entire ministries is about the miraculous power of God, it's not so much about the preaching of the word. You got yourself a problem. You got yourself a deceiver. And this is how you end up with a man like Benny Ham. And again, Mike Winger did an excellent job with this video. I will recommend it over and over again. Go check it out because it's four hours long of a whole lot of substance to work with. And you will learn so much by watching this and you will never fall for the trick again as the enemy has laid out for us. Anyway, friends, much more could be said. Share your thought and perspective with me. I think Benny Ham needs to repent. He needs to repent. Stop preaching. Stop teaching. Stop. Stop your ministry right there. And the many victims who have been done wrong, they need to get their money back somehow. In a real world, in an honest world where the law is applied accordingly, a man like Minnie Ham should have been behind bars a long time ago, locked up and torn away the keys, somebody. But anyway, you know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Forget that. Anyway, let me know what you think about this reaction video. Share your thought and perspective with me. Link in the description below to watch the entire thing. Comment and also like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Have a good one. Bye.